97.3 ESPN presents the Sports Bash with Mike Gill. It's time for Football at Four with Adam Kaplan, powered by the Inside the Birds podcast. We expect to win every time we step on the field. That's just the, the mindset and the culture that we have. Now, live from inside the Matt Black Kia Studios, it's Football at Four. Football at Four, powered by the Inside the Birds podcasting network. Of course, Jeff Mosher, Adam Kaplan dropped a great new pod Wednesday morning. Another one coming up tomorrow morning as they're recapping, of course, what happened in the Saints game. And as we start now to look forward to the Cardinals game, Adam Kaplan joins us every Thursday on the Boardwalk kind of hotline here on 97.3 ESPN. Adam, how you doing this Thursday? Doing well, guys. Hope you're doing well as we uh, get into week 15. The Eagles will play at Arizona. Uh, they just released their updated injury report. Um, Jack Driscoll didn't play, uh, didn't practice, which you know we we all know he's not playing this week with his MCL sprain. But uh, and Avanti Max, we know was not going to play with his knee injury. But every everybody else on the 53 man roster was able to practice today. So you know, before we get to specifically the game, you mentioned Jack Driscoll. I, I got to ask you, you know, I mean, this feels like I asked Moshe about this yesterday. It, it, this is a gut punch, right? I mean, the guy actually played well. Rodney McLeod, he goes down. He's done for the year. Is there a bit of a feeling of almost like, you know, man, you, know, you get the win, but then there's more injuries? Yeah, it would be such a big deal. Like, you know, Jack Driscoll, remember, he was drafted to be, and he probably will be over the years, to be their swing tackle, also could play guard. He was a, the way that it was supposed to happen. He was supposed to be their ninth or tenth offensive lineman this season. But remember, he is now the fifth offensive lineman lost for the season. So, as you said, Josh, you just cannot afford to lose him. So right now, Matt Pryor is going to take over, and all they have left is Brett Toth. That's literally it right now that, of anyone who's, who's seen any time. So they just they, they can't afford another injury. And what has surprised me also, they've not, they've not added a veteran offensive lineman from the street. So they, they, they've, they've got uh, the kid that they brought in from the um, Washington practice squad, but uh, who had very limited playing time. So look, they, they've got some challenges here, no question. Now, of course, the expectation is that Matt Pryor is going to be at right tackle, as you guys have mentioned on the podcast a couple times now. In your eyes, from everything people tell you, how much of that is a step down? Because you go from Lane Johnson to Driscoll, and Driscoll is playing well, and now down to Matt Pryor. You know, it's interesting, Josh. I, I was told you know, pretty strongly that Matt Pryor's best position by far is right tackle. This is really the only position where they think – you know, the, the belief is that he could really function at a higher level. Uh, guard, look, he did a yeoman's job last year. He kind of was a surprise. But he had a very difficult training camp, not d- regressed. That's why you saw early on he, wasn't a ve- he w- really was not playing. And now uh, he's at the position where he's most natural at. You know, he's so big and long and strong. You want to have him at a position where he's comfortable. And right tackle, clearly, it, is it. Adam, what did you see from Jalen Hurts in his first start last Sunday? Did a good job. Really handled everything well. So confident out there. I mean, I get that he's a rookie and he didn't throw for 300 yards, but he functioned well. Uh, he didn't throw the ball to the other team. That, that's obviously been big when you consider the, the turnovers they had with Carson Wentz, particularly throwing it. Now, he did have the one fumble. Uh, he'll learn from that, but threw the ball out, uh, out of bounds a, numer- a bunch of times, which is what they wanted. Not to, when you don't have it, get rid of the football, throw it out of bounds where no one else could get it. So I, I was surprised, pleasantly surprised at how well he played. I, he had no idea how he would play because it was his first NFL start, uh, going against arguably the NFL's best defense, and he ran the ball well. Fifteen times he ran, he ran it, three kneel downs, and he did a good job. I was very happy with the way that he uh, functioned in the offense. It's funny that you mentioned the running game because Miles Sanders had a big day on the ground too, his biggest game all season. How do you feel that Jalen Hurts impacted the running game? Because I personally believe that uh, it was because of Jalen Hurts and his running ability that it opened so much stuff up for Miles Sanders. And it's funny you say this because Miles Sanders kind of gave it away last week. He didn't say exactly what they would do, but he did say, listen, uh, with uh, Hertz back there, you know, he talked about zone read and RPOs. I mean, we all knew that probably if we, we've seen him play, Jalen Hurts, going back to Oklahoma, that was probably going to happen anyway. 
and he thought it would help him. I'm sure it did. Uh, you know, now he leads the NFL and runs over 70 yards. Not that anyone, not that a running back is going to have that. It's a very unique stat, but it clearly helped him. And the Saints had some uncharacteristically strange mental errors, um, which they shouldn't have had. But when you're going against a quarterback you haven't faced before, and remember, there was no preseason tape. He never started an NFL game. You know, you you might make some mistakes, and they did. And the Eagles certainly took advantage of it. Adam Kaplan, Inside the Birds Podcasting Network. Of course, the latest episode will drop tomorrow morning. Him and Jeff Mosher will get more into the Eagles versus the Cardinals game on that episode at 6 a.m. tomorrow morning. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and download the latest edition of the Inside the Birds podcast. Adam Kaplan at Kaplan NFL on Twitter. Adam, sticking with Jalen Hurts, I thought you and Jeff made a great point on the pod that dropped Wednesday morning, which is about, you know, people are talking about Hurts completion percentage, but some of those throws were him getting the ball out of there instead of taking sacks. And to me, that's a huge deal. I think that's a great point that you guys brought up. Can you get more into that about how, listen, this guy was installing the offense? Yeah, that, that's the thing. Like, you really have to watch the game. When, when people look at numbers and they just throw numbers out there without act, having any context, I mean, that that's the problem that we have sometimes in social media. If you look at 17 for 30, well, uh, again, now – you could say there are four or five throwaways, um, depending on how you really look at it. But if you add those as either throws he didn't make because he handed it off or around with the football, those aren't completions because, again, he was not trying to throw it to a receiver or tight end or running back. He's trying to get rid of the football. So that's really what happened. Uh, I know, again, I, I know the Eagles were very happy with uh, the way he processed. And here's another part of the game that I really liked. If you're going to run the football as much as he did, you cannot hesitate. If you see open grass, go. Don't wait till it closes. And that's the key to being a good running quarterback, if you're going to run. Now, eventually, he'll be more of a pocket passer. That'll probably happen. Now, this, this week will be a little bit tougher. I know we'll get into that in a couple minutes. But if you're going to run, please be decisive. And he was, and that, that was good to see. Flipping it over to the defensive side of the ball, because to me, that was incredibly mm-hmm. impressive. Mm-hmm. I mean, they had a 17-0 lead at halftime. I mean, I don't think I've – when was the last time we saw the Saints offense, whoever the quarterback is, you know, totally shut down like that? Uh, talk about the Eagles' D-line, because that was a huge game on Sunday. Look, they've – if you look at quarterback pressures, they're the number one quarterback pressure team. That doesn't mean number one sacks. It means pressures are when you make the quarterback move off the spot. They're great with that. They just have not, as you know, and we, we, Jeff and I have complained about it on Inside the Birds, they don't force a lot of turnovers. But what they did in this game was just they were relentless. Uh, I could tell that Sean Payton was not very happy in his Monday press conference with some of his linemen. He actually called them out by name, particularly Andrews Pete. Uh, the Eagles are just incredible, and Javon Hargrave was awesome. Now, he had been coming on in recent weeks, but this was his best games in Eagle. It wasn't just a couple sacks. Relentless. Got low, got leverage, was phenomenal. Fletcher Cox played very well. Josh Sweat does it once again. What a great draft pick he's been. The fourth rounder uh, for Florida State in, in, in 2018. He's been awesome. So you got to give Jim Schwartz credit. Look, I know he doesn't like the blitz, and he played against a running quarterback, although he, uh, Taysom Hill did not run the ball effectively. Uh, yeah, he had some nice runs, but he didn't break their back like, uh, like Hurts did. And I, I just got to give the coaches credit. Jeff and I have uh, been very critical of uh, – you know, the Eagles play callers this season, but Jim Schwartz and their defense, if you look at and he does this every season, just when you think that he's not having a good year, the numbers always come home. He's going to be in t- top ten in most important categories other than turnovers. That's This is kind of the story with Jim Schwartz every year. Adam, the secondary played really well uh, for the most part until the injury bug really yeah. bit them. Specifically with Rodney McLeod and Darius Slay, uh, what is the future now uh, for these next couple games with that secondary now being moving parts again? Yeah, so Avante Maddox won't play this week, and he, it sounds like he's going to be out a couple weeks. So that with his knee injury, this this is a problem. Um, Nicole Roby Coleman, I mean, he he you know obviously he sees a lot of time in, in the slot. He's played some outside the season, which is not ideal. He's just over five foot seven. This is certainly not good. Um, you're, you're going to see sort of a committee. I, I strongly believe you're going to see Jalen Mills move back to corner. They've got a bunch of young safeties they like. They like. Kayvon Wallace is a, is a draft pick. Graylon Arnold and a couple other young safeties. They have the, see, the thing is they have the bodies at safety. 
It's just that they don't have any experience, and that's the problem that you have now with Ryan McLeod out for the season. In fact, he's got some fully guaranteed money next year. Uh, they could walk away from him, but they'd owe him the money. But they love having Rodney back, you know, around. He's been such a great example of being a great veteran and uh, high, cl- high character guy. Just a great stuff for the community. We'll see what they do uh, once, once he's recovered from his injury next summer. But th- what you're going to see, guys, is a lot of younger players, a lot of younger players uh, playing at the safety position. And, you're, and, and Michael Chiquette, when he comes back from his hamstring injury, he'll be there at corner because, you know what, he has size. He, he's around six feet. So that's a guy they want to take a look at. But uh, remember, he's been out for a little bit with a hamstring injury. Also on Sunday, we saw another solid game for Alex Singleton. He had eight solo tackles in the game. Between him and Javon Hargrave, they, they had to be two of the biggest uh, takeaway stars from that game on defense. Josh, Alex Singleton is maybe one of the biggest stories for their defense this season that no one's talking about. He's been absolutely phenomenal. Um, this is quite the fine, the former, we, we call him a CFL refugee. He's been uh, quite the story. He's done a great job, and this guy's an every week starter for them. There, there's simply no way that he doesn't start the rest of the season. Uh, great fine for them, given their pro personnel department. You know, he doesn't make a lot of mental er- errors. Uh, physical errors because he's not as talented as some other players, but he's been a great story of development. And uh, I, I, this guy came kind of out of nowhere. I, I never expected this, but he's been a great story of development. Adam, this Eagles defense against this Cardinals offense. Now, Cliff Kingsbury runs that air raid type system, and he has the guy to run it with Kyler Murray. How does this defense match up now with all these guys hurt in the secondary? You got Christian Kirk, who's a big play, underrated threat, along with DeAndre Hopkins and Kyler Murray. Yeah, I'll be honest with you. This is going to be a problem because, as we were just saying, with all these guys out, they're big, what we call 10 personnel or four wide receiver offense. This is going to be an issue because what, what, what they'll do is they'll spread them out and you, you're going to, this, this, just make, this just gives the Cardinals so many matches. You mentioned Christian Kirk, who's been dormant lately. He, middle of the season, he was, looked like he was having a breakout season, but he's been very quiet lately. Uh, Kirk is sort of the designated deep threat when they throw it deep. He will be that guy. And watch number 85, Dan Arnold, who was a receiver in college. He doesn't get a lot of passes. When he does, he scores. He's a vertical threat at tight end. So this is where, to me, the Eagles are – if they had everybody healthy, I thought the Eagles could steal this game. But when you look at the matchups, guys, they don't they, – they just this issue that the Cardinals have that will hurt the Eagles is they could spread them out. And with all these injuries at corner and safety, to me, this is going to be the difference in this game this week. And plus, with Kyler Murray being a running quarterback and the way that he runs to the edges, you've got to be very, very disciplined. Adam Kaplan, follow him on Twitter at Kaplan NFL Inside the Birds podcast, live right now on the Inside the Birds podcasting network. Also, the next episode drops tomorrow morning at 6 a.m. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and download the podcast when it drops. Now, you mentioned about the injuries on the defense. When you think about also for the Eagles, do they in some ways have the offense to maybe keep up with the Cardinals if this game potentially gets away from them defensively? Yeah, it's a great question. In fact, that to me is the story of the week here with, with, with Jalen Hurts because he, they got the big lead. They didn't ask him to bring the team back. That's really the next test, and I, I, I'm almost certain it's going to happen. I would be shocked if they got a deep, like a 10 nothing lead. Uh, but then again, obviously, if the Cardinals get behind, they still could score because of the issues the Eagles have in the secondary. It's a fascinating scenario here. Uh, it would not shock me if he had to throw the ball 30, 35 to 40 times. Yes, the Eagles don't want to do that, and Miles Sanders was great. Uh, to me, as much as I love throwing the football, coming out and throwing, because that's what analytics tells you, you should do that. I would like to see a little bit more of the run game with Sanders and also Jordan Howard, who obviously was not working last week. I, I'd like to see him actually play this week. And, may, and then the other issue is, you know, Hurts ran the ball 15 times. We, we, let's take out the three kneel downs. How much are you going to have a run this week? That, that's, another, that's another factor. Uh, to me, I go more to the actual running backs than, than Hurts this week. It's going to be a fascinating dilemma for the coaches. Speaking of a fascinating dilemma, the Cardinals have a diff- defense that's very different in terms of style and the players you have to watch out for than the Saints do. What are some of the things that concern you about the Cardinals' defense for the Eagles? Yeah, and they, they run a 34 front. It's not like the Eagles haven't played a 34. They did great against uh, the Steelers. That was unfortunately when Travis Fulgham was doing well. Uh, when I say unfortunately, he's not a factor anymore, which has been bizarre to me. Uh, but when you look at 
the Cardinals, they're not a shutdown defense. You can move the ball against them. They've had some bad games. They've had some good games. They were terrific last week. Because what happened against the Giants is that Hassan Reddick, uh, the former first-rounder out of Temple, he had five sacks. Well, look, he's fast. He's a speed rusher. You've you got to identify him. Remember, they don't have Chandler Jones. Other than, other than uh, the great Patrick Peterson, they're not very good at cornerback. So, look, you can move the ball against them. They are not a shutdown defense. you just got to be able to protect that's what we were saying earlier. Matt Pryor's got it. He's just got to do it. He's got to do a good job at right tackle. Jordan Mailai, we didn't talk about him. He was terrific last week. He's been an unbelievable story of development for them. Uh, their, their guards have to play, continue to play well. I, I was blown away with how well the, the Eagles offensive line played. Again, yet another situation where who saw it coming? I certainly didn't. You mentioned about Mailata. I mean, if somebody asked Mosher, I'll ask it to you as well. You guys talked about it on the podcast, you know, is there something to be said for the fact the way the Eagles have developed this guy from being basically somebody that most people had never heard of to being a bona fide left tackle for this team? Yeah, and it's funny because they didn't. It, Jeff Stoutland, the O line coach, really didn't want to play him early, but he got forced to. And it, what's funny is it's not that he didn't want to play him. I don't. My sense is he didn't think he was ready, so he re- relied on other players. You remember, my light also played right tackle this season, but. He was also the guy who was instrumental in them trading up to get Mylotta three years ago in, in, in the 18 draft. And the, the one thing is, is our friend Trey Thomas told us on our Inside the Birds pregame show, when you look at the way that Jeff Stoutland teaches technique, it's a little bit different than most, line, most offensive linemen are taught. They're taught to let the guy get into you a little bit, and then you strike him, which is not naturally, from a mental standpoint, the way you would teach it. But Stoutland's such a great coach that eventually these players get it, and they do very well, as we know, and Stoutland's one of the best line coaches in the National Football League. So this is really one of the most remarkable stories. A guy who never played football in his life, never even put it on a helmet until the Eagles actually drafted him. And that right now he looks like a guy, at the very least, could compete for the left tackle job next year against Andre Dillard. Yeah, and that being said, I mean, you came into this season, it's supposed to be Dillard out there and Brooks and Johnson, and now you're going to this game with Pryor and Herbig and... I mean, uh, uh, we just said his name, Mayalata. What, what, what do you think about the play of this team moving forward? Because it feels like that the job that Stoutland has done has really elevated the play of a bunch of guys who I think the casual fan or the average fan would have turned around and said, who is that? Right. Look, it's, a, it's an incredible story uh, of development for these guys. And this has been the story this season. And it, it's happened in recent seasons. These coaches will, will tell you it's like they, they don't want to have to, to coach these backups as much, uh, or in terms of starting, but they're having to do that. And right when you thought it was a dismal season and they probably wouldn't win another game, they, they beat a team like the Saints. You never could have predicted it. Um, they, they, this is what they did last December uh, when, they, when they, won the fun, they won those final four games to get into the playoffs, which was we didn't see that happening. Just been a great story for their coaches because Jeff and I have really criticized their coaches this season, uh, you know, based on what we've seen and what other people in the league have seen. But Give them credit. They, they've been resilient here, but you know what? That's one week, and they've got to do it once again on the road against the Cardinals. He's Adam Kaplan. Follow him on Twitter at Kaplan NFL. Make sure you subscribe and download the Inside the Birds podcast. The next episode drops tomorrow morning at 6 a.m. And, of course, he mentioned the Inside the Birds pregame show with Adam, Jeff Mosher, and Greg Cosell, Trey Thomas, Jeff Mosher. We'll be back in tomorrow for football at 4. Adam, always great stuff. Guys, thank you. And, of course, Football at Four being brought to you today on the Sports Bash by PlaySugarHouse.com. Sign up now to match your first deposit up to $250. Go to PlaySugarHouse.com and win real money with their sports book along with casino games from the comfort of your home. Must be 21 or to play. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLE.